Ah, super. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Miguel Caron. I'm the general manager for Gamesys Estonia, as well as the head of the Baltic Studio. Uh, the Baltic Studios, actually, we have three studios in the Baltics. We have uh, a tech studio, which is led by Dimitri Plahotnikov. Uh, he's the, the lead of that studio. Uh, we have Kaya, who, uh, who is right here. She's the lead of the game studios, the game production studio. She's produced games, uh, multiple different streams of different games. And then we have a brand new uh, pre-production studio that defines the mechanic and the mathematics of all the casino games for GameSys. This uh, pre-production studio is going to be led by a very famous uh, individual in the industry. I'm not going to say his name now because he hasn't started yet, so uh, we'll wait for him to start. Those three studios are basically the food chain of, of making games or creating games for GameSys. GameSys uh, is a, was until the last, the end of September, was a very large company. Now we are even larger because in September, at the end of September, we concluded a financial transaction of over 500 million dollar a euro, a pound actually. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, jumping from uh, I live in many countries, but head office is in uh, London. So this transaction was in pound, uh, where we merged our business with Jackpot Joy, and that created uh, the company that we are now, which is one of the largest casino operator online casino operator in the world. We don't have any physical casino, only online ventures. So that's GameSys. And today, I'm gonna actually do with you uh, something I've never done before. Uh, that's gonna be the biggest round table ever. This is the actual formal training that I do with leaders that just got promoted as a lead. Uh, and it's actually the one, uh, we have some leaders here. Sergey is a team lead in the tech studio. Uh, Ilsan is a work in progress in the tech studio. Uh, so we have some, some leaders and some upcoming leaders that I went, actually went through this presentation uh, in, uh, in Tallinn in our office. Uh, now, the presentation is uh, usually made to be around a table with leader or young leader to discuss it. I'm gonna try to mimic this with you guys. So uh, I'm gonna take questions within the presentation. So don't be shy to interrupt me, ask me questions, ask me more precision. Uh, it'd be happy to help you out. Uh, last things, I'm French Canadian. Uh, I tend to speak fast. So uh, as a French Canadian, I was born with both French and English. In Canada, we have two national uh, official language. So uh, while I'm comfortable in English, sometimes I speak a little bit too fast. So if there's words you don't understand, just slow me down or ask me questions. Cool? Okay. So before we start with the definition, I want to know who here has any direct report? Raise your hand and keep your hand up if you have anyone reporting to you. So anyone that you're their lead. S stay your hands up for seconds, okay? Uh, w which one of those, keep your hands up, the other one was done, has been promoted in that role in the last six months? Good, good, okay, super. So uh, do you guys, I mean, the definition is there, but the, the definition of leadership is something that uh, has been really tortured, <laughs> depending on where you are, from which company you are, what culture of company you are. But the real, the true definition of leadership is the art to influence people in a way wanted by the leader. Two very important words there, art. So this is something that you, you need certain innate skills. If you don't have those innate skills, most likely you don't have an interest to lead people. Uh, very rarely I've seen people uh, that wants to be leader and they don't have, they want to be leader, but they're introvert, they don't like people, they don't want to talk to people, they don't like to be with people, but they want a leader. This, uh, I'm 47, I've never seen that. I'm sure uh, the moment with humanity that you said I've never seen that, there's gonna be a hedge case saying, hey, I'm like this. <laughs> but uh, I'm just saying this is actually quite rare. So the art is about it's something you can learn, like an artist, you can uh, increase your skill, but you need some innate interest. You need to like people. If you don't like people, that's gonna be very hard to listen to me today because everything that I, I'm gonna tell you, it's about people, about human. So, and now the other part of it, it's influence. The, the word influence is very different than manipulation. So when you want to influence some, some, someone, there's a, a, an understanding that you're trying to get the win-win, that while you're influencing someone to do a different thing or a thing different, different way, 
well, that person will get benefit from being influenced by you, and you're gonna get benefit because the job's gonna get done. So it's a win-win relationship. If you talked about manipulation, this is different. When you manipulate someone, you get him to do something that brings you something good, but for him, it's neutral or negative. So that's manipulation. Uh, so this is very important. It's the, not the art of manipulating people. It's the art of influencing people in a way wanted by the leader. Any question, comments about this? Good. So anyone have, has read The Seven Habits from Stephen Covey? Did you read? Good, good, good. This is a must, guys. You need to read this. 160 pages. You can read it in a weekend. Uh, I've done a lot of crazy leadership classes in my life. I've lived in four different countries. Uh, and, uh, and all those Harvard leadership classes that I've done is resume such brilliantly and so efficiently in the seven habits. So if you don't want to spend years and years of reading psychological document about people, about biology, about leadership, about psychology, then just read the seven habits. You're gonna get 90% of what the other guy is gonna get by going the long way. It's really, really well done. And in the seven habits, uh, usually when you guys got promoted, I really hope that within your growth, you got promoted here. The way the seven habits works is that the first three habits, it's about your personal victory. It's about you. Are you able to lead yourself? Are you able to uh, give yourself an objective and achieve it. And there's three habits related to that. I'm not gonna go, uh, today it's not a class about the seven habits, so if you want this, well, apply to GameSys and you'll have me and my little seven habits book coaching you all the time. <laughs> but uh, the first three habits is really about self-leadership, um, so how to lead yourself. And then when you get to be very good at being proactive, you're really good at prioritizing, you're really good at keeping the end objective in mind. When you get all those skills embedded in you as, a, as an employee, then the leader says, ah, it's time. You're now lead, here's your new team. Oh shit, what happened now? What do I do? This is where the leader saw that from a dependence perspective, at the beginning when you entered the company, you were dependent. You needed the leader to give you tasks. You needed your friend to show you uh, the, the, the GitHub for this project. You needed, you needed everyone to help you out. You were like uh, teenagers, basically. But at one point, you, when you master those three habits, you become independent. You don't need your boss to be there. Your boss can take six months vacation, the job is gonna get done, everything is gonna get done. That means that you're getting at the independence level and you're ready to start helping others and leading others. And this is where you usually get promoted. Uh, I say usually. Uh, in GameSys, our culture, uh, in GameSys Estonia anyway, our culture is I usually let the team promote someone. Uh, I don't mean it this way. What I mean it is that at one point, someone is acting like the leader. Everyone around him is following like the leader. I look at, at this dev group and there's, they're always surrounding one guy over his shoulder, say, oh, how do you do this? Oh, how, oh, how do you do this? And then at one point, I'm like, okay, he's the lead. I'm just acknowledging the fact that he's the lead. Unfortunately, not every company works this way. A lot of the time it's like, he's the best coder, you're the lead, which is a big, big mistake. Well, I'm talking to these people now, these people that did not expect to become a leader or do not expect in the future to become a leader, but what if it happens? What if you're given that? And, and it happened in my career, uh, as I said, I'm 47, so I've, I've had a long run at doing these things. Uh, that some people didn't want to be a leader, but when they were giving the task, they said, okay, I'll take, one for, I'll take a bullet for the team, you know, I'll be the leader. And they went through it to say, okay, I'm gonna do it. The checks were like that. The checks is like, who wants to be our director? Everyone was hiding. Who wants to be, you know, they, didn't, they don't want to be on the spotlight. But when someone said, okay, I'll take a bullet for the team, I'll do it, many of those actually started to enjoy it. Many of those started to say, okay, what, you know what? It, 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 is, it is a science. It is something that I can, I can learn and it is something I can improve. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Today we're not gonna show the master class, as you said. Might not be kindergarten, I'd say it's uh, college. So uh, it's, uh, or international bachelor program. So uh, that, that's what we're gonna show today. It's the basic. It's the thing where you have to change your mindset. Uh, you don't have to just do the work you were doing and ordering people around. That's not what a leader is. You have to change the, the glasses, the way you see things through. 
And it starts with glasses, vision, <laughs> a very good uh, cameo. So it starts with the vision. A leader without a vision, uh, you've seen a lot of those, and, and I'm making a very bold stereotype statement, but you've seen a lot of YouTube video with <laughs> leaders without vision uh, from the US. You know, let's go, we're the best. And they do these, all these marketing things to get everyone pumped up, but why, why the fuck am I doing this? Like, why am I screaming? I'm, a, I'm an adult. Why am I running around the store screaming that I'm the best? I'm an adult, like really, seriously, what's your vision? What are you doing? What are you, why are you making us do this? Having a vision is really the glue, is the direction, is basically the sniper uh, telescope where you align all your team towards to. The vision so should inspire people. If you're not able to have a vision yourself for your team and for what, where you want to achieve uh, with your team or how you want to grow, then how can you motivate them? How can you do everything else that I'm going to teach you about? It's going to be very difficult. If you don't say, guys, you know what I told uh, uh, when I, I joined Games 16 months ago, I told the leadership team, uh, guys, do you mind if we become the best Games studio that we are known within all of Games to be the AAA studio where our games are always a unique special feature, our games are always, always have Easter eggs, and how we, we do it, how fast we do it. Same thing with the tech studio, how active we are. You know, we don't do meetings to plan a meetings. We actually do a meetings to plan a uh, uh, delivery. So all these type of aspect I, I shared. Well, I, I, it's, it was not my vision. I, I, I built up a team vision with my leaders, and, and they jumped on that bus. So once you have a vision, then you can do the rest. You can motivate them. This is the toughest thing I can tell a young leader if you are unable to get a little bit more out of, a little bit more value out of your team, you're just an overhead. You're just a cost that waits to be cut. If you're a leader and you are unable to motivate people, you are useless. You are an overhead. You are the same thing as uh, the beer that you bought that passed you and then you have to throw it in the garbage. That's exactly what you are. So leader needs to be able to light up the fire in their team. If the team cannot produce a little bit more value because you're their leader, again, you have to look out at what type of leadership are you projecting. Do you have a vision and are you doing these basic steps? You know? So motivation is very important. This one, <laughs> it's tough. And it's tough to accept. Uh, the first thing I say when I join a new company, and it, it's funny because uh, each time people don't believe me when I say it, uh, and, and they can concur. It's the first thing that I said on my first day at GameSense. I said, guys, you don't work for me. I work for you. My job is to get you to be able to produce more value. I'm not the, the one that's producing the value as a leader. You guys are. They are the bullet. I'm the black powder behind the bullet. And as a as black powder without a bullet, an exec without a good team just makes noise, just talk loud, and doesn't do anything, doesn't achieve anything. Uh, a bullet with a slingshot or a bullet thrown, this can still hurt, you know? So a team without leader can still produce stuff. A leader without a team can do nothing, you know? If uh, it would be zombie apocalypse, you guys would be king. All the CEOs would be cleaning the bathroom. You know, uh, this is the reality. Leaders need to be able to understand this, to understand their position. This is where when you have a, uh, a leader with ego, it doesn't follow these golden rules of leadership. And then he starts managing the people and not leading them. That's very different. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about it. So if serve hurts you too much, then what I mean is support. It means help, support, coach, lift up. Uh, uh, you know, curling, a uh, very Canadian sport. Uh, the leader is the broom guy, you know, is the one influencing the way uh, the rock, or the, we call it the rock, hits. Uh, so that's basically the leadership. So if you enter leadership and think, ah, I'm the boss now. You do this, you do that, you do this. Well, that's going to last a month. <laughs> and then you'll have no team. Uh, or you'll have a very ineffective team or a very dysfunctional team. So very important that you keep this in mind. That doesn't mean submission. So 
while I serve my team, I'm not submitting myself to them. I still lead them. I'm still a very dominant personality. But in my mind, every task that I do is, does it help them? Am I helping them grow? Am I helping them achieve their objective? So everything that I do is always about them, all the time. And this is something uh, that it's, uh, for me was natural, but for a lot of leader, depending from which culture you come from, this is something that is tough to learn. It's uh, humility. Now, this one, super important. Now, who can tell me the difference between empathy and sympathy? And give me an example. I, um, I lost my dog. Uh, what is different if you are empathetic towards me or if you are sympathetic towards me? Come on, guys, try. Yeah. That's really good. That's really, really good. Bravo. Uh, I'd give you 95%. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's really, really good. The, it's sympathetic. To be sympathetic starts with at least, it starts like this. When you're sympathetic, you start with, well, at least you, your cat didn't die. You know? <laughs> at least uh, your dog didn't suffer. At least uh, you know, your dog had a good life. Uh, this is sympathetic. So basically the person is in a dark hole and you're walking and you're like, hey man, are you okay? Looks dark down there. That's being sympathetic, you know? Uh, being uh, uh, empathic is actually going down the dark hole, sitting down with a person and, hey man, I'm here to listen. Anything I can do? That's being empathetic. It's being able to take your frame of mind. Your frame of mind is your education, you know? Estonian, Estonian Russian, Russian, all the things that were taught to you. It's to take this, put it aside, and try to take the mind of the other person and put it inside you. That person is from this country, has with this challenges and this thing, and they had this issue with his personal life and this issue with his professional life. It's taking this and saying, what, how would I feel if I was in his shoes? So that's empathy, and that's very important. Now, one thing I forgot to tell you from the beginning, everything I'm teaching you does not work if you're not sincere, does not work if you're, if you're, you're faking it. Uh, humanity, uh, the reason why we're on top of the food chain is our ability to see pattern. The brain, when we develop an ability to see pattern, this is what gives us a huge edge on everything. Whether it's see the stars or anything, the moment we can see patterns, boom, we started being a class above the normal animals. And Pattern between ourselves, body language pattern, all these type of pattern, it's something that is, is very recognizable. And if you're a fake leader, if you're not sincere, if you hate people, but you say, okay, nine o'clock, I'm a leader. Hey, everybody, I love you so much. I'm so happy to see you. You know, we see it right away. It's not sincere. It doesn't come from the heart. It doesn't come, it's, there's so many telltale signs in the body language, your brain's like, nah, bullshit, fake, and then you pull out and then you don't listen. So empathy and everything else that I'm telling you is important that you're sincere, don't fake it. You know, it's being sincere. If you have to fake it, don't do it because it's gonna get you even a reverse result. Creativity, very important leaders. Uh, at, at, at higher level of leadership, uh, you, cannot say, you, you cannot say to anyone bring your problem, well, that's bad. What do we do? It's not something you can do. Uh, you have to be able to either find a solution or be able to inspire people to find solution or motivate people to find solution. Again, you're the catalyst. So creativity is something very important. Uh, the team can tell you that I can be <laughs> creative sometimes <laughs> in, in ways to solve problems. <laughs> so creativity is very important, not just for you to have creativity, but to uh, encourage creativity in your team to uh, one of the seven DNA strands of GameSys, the last one, which is the one that got me hired, I think, well, it got motivated me to apply anyway, or to, to, to say yes to the offer anyway, was wonderfully weird. In GameSys, we say that we love wonderfully weird people, and we, we are a wonderfully weird company. 
that's very different than weirdos. Uh, weirdos is a different categories. <laughs> We're talking about weirdness that is wonderful. Uh, people that are very different, uh, but they, their mindset uh, brings value to you that no other mindset could do that. And, and that's very important. So creativity should be uh, uh, praised in any organization and in any leadership um, mindset. Now, it's not just about fun, thoroughness, to be precise, to, be, to want quality, to demand quality from your team. That one is very tough because it's, a, it's one of the, the, the value as a leader, one of the things that you need to do where you have to show the example. I cannot ask people to be, I, I, I never do this by the way, I'm just giving a caricatural example, but I cannot ask a leader never to make English mistakes in their email if I do tons of English mistakes in my email. So thoroughness, preciseness, being able to deliver it uh, at a high quality, deliver anything to a high quality, and being careful about whatever you do. We have a saying in, in Quebec, in French, that we say, if something is worth being done, it's worth being well done. So if it's not worth doing it well, then it's not worth doing it at, at all. So this is another important aspect in leadership. In, in this uh, category, you could put as well uh, something that I had to improve a lot uh, when I was 30, 35. This is what's missing in me, is uh, being able to be on time. Uh, I'm a type of, of leader that I'm either extremely focused or extremely multitask uh, or matrix. And, and when I'm very focused on a human, I, I don't hear my phone beeping, I don't hear anything. Now I have, a, I have beeping so many places in me that I'm able to be uh, uh, on time. But this is something being thorough. Uh, it means being on time, it means all the other, in fact, it means dressing accordingly to what you have to do. Uh, it means everything, all those little details is being thorough as a leader, it's very important. And in that part, when you're thorough, being thorough doesn't mean to steamroll your team. Being thorough means knowing everything about your team and being able to do it in a very good way. That means that you need to learn how to listen. Uh, this is very important for a leader as well. Is, uh, Try to understand before being understood. Habit number six in the seven <coughs> habits. So this is a very, very important part. So if I want to be understood, I need to understand the frame of mind of my team. If I see that one of my leader is <coughs> reacting uh, in a more intense way than that person should in that current situation, I'm not gonna react to it. I'm gonna start thinking, okay, what is that person is having as a challenge right now in terms of professional challenge? Oh, okay, she, she, that person is having this, having that, having that, having that challenge. Okay, I understand. That person has so much weight. She has a, that person has a, a reverse pyramid of stuff to do leaning on her head. And, uh, and I just added one more. <laughs> so it's normal I got a little bit of the steam out of it, you know? So, uh, and, and I'm not gonna address it because I'm not the cause of the situation and I listen, and I mean listen, not just the words, but I listen at looking at the person, understanding what she has to do. So that's being thorough. Managing, <coughs> that's not leadership, different, right? So managing is something important because as a leader, I don't go around like this, what I'm telling you all the time, right? 50% <laughs> of the time, I don't do this all the time. I'm not like, ah, so what are you doing? Oh, what? so what is your goal for today? I, I, that would be very boring. <laughs> and, and I get kicked out of Estonia within a week. <laughs> so uh, it's not something that I do all the time. There's moment where, whoop, I'm a leader. And there's other moment, I'm an administrator, I'm a manager. And I'll, I'll tell you a little bit later how to choose them right. But managing is, is important. And it's not, and not managing is very important as well. So managing is as important as not managing, but you have to be the one choosing it. So if I, uh, at the beginning, when I get into a new company, a new project, I kind of lead everything. But as I learn about my leaders, I learn how comfortable they are in their sandbox, uh, I look at, their thought process, how they make decision, and I, I start building trust with it. Well, I have trust from the get-go as a default setting, and then every action that they take, everything that they do, it reassures me that my trust is right. 
uh, every time, oh yeah, I was right, I'm right to trust them, I'm right to trust them, I'm right to trust them. And, and at one point, I'm like, you know what? I don't have so much value anymore for those type of decision around that leader or around that team, so I'm gonna tell that leader, you know what, from now on, don't involve me with those decisions anymore, I trust you. So I do a step back and I let them manage the thing. Uh, while I let them manage the thing, I have some elastic like, that I pull, say, hey, so what's up? You know, some gates or something that where I see, oh, okay, everything is going well. So I don't manage blindly. I don't give blind trust, I give smart trust. So a sandbox that allows them to make mistakes because you learn a lot more when you make a mistake than when you do something good. So I allow them to make mistakes, making sure that within their sandbox, the mistakes can be small, can be fast, so they can learn a lot without bankrupting the company. And then as they grow, and I see they don't make any really bad mistake, we grow the sandbox, we grow the sandbox, I pull out, I pull out, and I let them manage more and more and more. And at one point, I become just, I receive their updates on how the things are going. And at that point, usually I build the trust, uh, uh, not just me trusting them, but at that point, usually they trust me. So then I know that if there are an issue where they know I could help, they're gonna say, hey Miguel, come, I need your help. Can you do this? Boom, and I'll do it. So again, I, I'll do it, and it, it happens like this. They, t they, they give me a task. Most of the thing I do in, at work are tasks given by my leaders. So it's, it's not a joke when I say I work for them. Uh, it is really how, how I think and how we do it. Um, team building. Uh, so different in Canada than it was when I was in California, than it was I was in Czech Republic, and I was in, in, in uh, Estonia. Team, team building and, team and getting the team to fuse itself in a single goal, in a single direction, it's completely different recipe depending on the culture, depending on everything, but at the higher level in terms of the philosophy, it's the same philosophy. It's different tactics, but the same philosophy. It's just that with Slavic and Nordic people, you have to approach it very systematically. Uh, with North American, uh, especially American, you can approach it with emotion. Uh, with Nordic people, you have to be more systematic uh, in the way. You say, okay, this is the way, this is psychology, how brain reacts to this and this and that. With, with uh, the, my experience with North America uh, was more like, guys, we're the best, right? Yeah, we're the best, we're the best. Well, we have a mission, we have a vision, we're going towards that vision, but I don't need to explain them all the mechanic of the brain and everything. And, uh, with uh, Nordic Slavic people, they're a little bit more say, you know what, most people that talk to us about leadership, they invaded us, so you know what? <laughs> <laughs> give us the rules, give, tell us how it works, really. You know, don't give us bullshit. So um, team building is, is very important. And within team building, I mentioned it before, trust is super important. Uh, people, uh, know that I trust them in the studio. They really know. It took sometimes a, a long time for them to know that I trust them. But uh, I, I showed them that I trust them and I repeated the fact that I trust them. Not just through my action, verbally too, you know? Uh, and it is something that is very important uh, within leadership. Now you have to do it differently based on your team. Uh, the first time that I give a compliment in Estonia to my, uh, Estonian Russian, the lead of uh, the tech studio, I said, oh, Dimitri, you did a great job. He turned around, he looked at me, he said, what do you need, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> That's really, it's a true story. That's what he said. I was like, I wanted to give you a compliment. <laughs> he said, increase my salary. That's a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> True story. So, so uh, now our relationship has grown, and Dimitri is, is a friend now, as, same as Kaya, and our relationship has, has grown from that first month where they were seeing me with my big boots, you know? But uh, it, is, it is really the case. So you, again, you have to adapt your leadership to your team, and, and you have to make sure that uh, you're listening to them, that you're not just doing what I'm saying as a, as a robot, but you're adapting it to your, to your team. You know, I was telling, I was having a discussion with, um, with people, I don't, uh, yeah, with uh, some guests that we had in, uh, uh, from London in our office today, and I was telling them that uh, in, in software engineering, you have to consider edge cases, right? 
uh, some of those very, very rare cases that could happen. And, and those are very, very rare, but because of the way uh, uh, IT system works, those cases can actually happen. Uh, in humanity, when you do leadership, this is normal people. These are the hedge case. So in, in, in leadership, everyone is different. There's so many variables in a human being that you have to be very careful. One of the first things I coach leaders to do is never to use absolute word. And I just did it. Never to use absolute word. That's the only absolution that you can do, is never to use absolute word. Why? Because the moment you say everyone is like this, uh, this is the best way, this is the worst way, uh, we are the best, they are the worst. Every time that you use absolute words, you're making yourself a liar because there's nothing absolute about humanity. Uh, with the amount of difference in genetic in every single individual in, around this room, and then you add the education, and then you add the mindset, and then you add what type of day did you have today, all those things will influence how you're gonna interact with your leader and how the leader will interact with you. So. Uh, this is one of the most difficult tasks of leadership and one that needs a lot of emotional intelligence. It's team building. Taking risk. So this is, <laughs> I guess, the number one, one of the number one thing that a young leader is like, no way. <laughs> nope, not me. Boss, tell me what to do. <laughs> I'm not taking that decision. Oh, should we go with Unity or Unreal? Nope, I'm not deciding this. Uh, you decide, uh, because the consequences, if I make a wrong call, is not something I want to handle. Well, guess what? When you're a lead, you have to handle those type of decisions. You have to be able to take risk. Now, you have to do it in intelligently. You have to do it in a balanced way. And you have to make sure that you have mitigation plans if it doesn't go exactly as you have planned. Spoiler. It usually doesn't, <laughs> so better have some mitigation plan uh, for you. So taking risk is something that is very important. Now, you take the risk, and it was a mistake. You failed. Now, how do you react? So there's something uh, very important in leadership in terms of philosophy of leadership. And that it's another thing that uh, leaders that just could put on place that in their natural personality, they have a little bit of ego, naturally, and they go, burp, 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 you know? This one, they, they have a very hard time to understand it and to actually internalize it and accept it. If your team is successful in a project, it's because of your team. If the team fail, it's because of the leader. Leaders should never have credit. So those leaders that you know about, Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, all those guys, they're not leaders. They're not strong leaders. They lead technology. They have different kind of set. They're creators. They're not leaders. Those leaders that are very strong, very powerful, you know their company, you don't know them. Who's the CEO of Netflix? Who's the CEO of Spotify? Who's the CEO of Steam? Uh, Steam, guy, no? <laughs> but so all those guys, are way better leader than Elon Musk and Steve Jobs and all those guys. And they made a lot of money as well. But you never heard their names. Why? Because they talk about their company. They talk about their team. They're, they're, they don't go on the stage, eh, I created Netflix. I broke Hollywood. I broke all of Hollywood, you know? This guy never says anything like that. He always talked, it's, it's always the company that is in the fast forward. I recommend you guys to Google or go on my LinkedIn, it's, it's, it's in, within my profile somewhere. Uh, I think I put it there 10 years ago, so you have to, to go down. But uh, search for a Netflix HR presentation. This is like a 15-year-old presentation that was done by the VP HR at Netflix. And it's on slide, slide uh, where? Slide, there's a website where you have all, slide, slide share. I think it's on slide share. And it's uh, 72 slide. It's amazing read. Uh, you're gonna really, really love it. And uh, y this is where you said, like, yeah, fuck, he's right. Like those huge company, I use a, I don't have a, I don't have a Tesla, but I use product in my phone and my home from all those great leaders, I don't even know their name. Uh, that's because they don't want you to know their name. You want, they want you to know their team. They want you to know the success of their team. And that's what leadership is about. Improving, so Marcus, ah, oh, here. Uh, when I, I was, uh, just really quickly, so when I was talking about these are the three habits to manage yourself, those are the three habits to manage uh, people. 
But there's a seven habit that takes everything, and it's called sharpening the saw. And this habit is about continuous improvement, continuous learning. And Stephen Covey didn't even stop at uh, academic or scientific or IT learning. He said there's three aspects of yourself to be a good leader that you have to continuously improve. The first one is your brain, the amount of knowledge, of information. You have to continuously learn. The second one is your, uh, he was kind of religious, but over, uh, that was done, the book was written in the 60s, so it's been, uh, I, I'm adapting it. So to your spirit, to your emotional stability, you know? Uh, for Stephen Covey, it was spiritual. But I'm, I'm, say, I'm putting more in like, are you the type of guy that's a fuck this, fuck that, I'm in a bad mood, oh, you say it's fucking cold outside, oh, I don't like it, everything. If you're like this, naturally, if your emotions are always down and you always see everything as, as half empty, it's gonna be very hard for you to motivate people. And to, so you need to try to improve your emotional balance, your intellectual balance, and Stephen Covey says physical as well. If you are not disciplined, if you don't manage your physical, I'm not talking about sickness, I'm not talking about genetic uh, issue or uh, thing like that. I'm talking about health discipline, you know, eating well, training, like the discipline about your body. If you are not able to manage your biological vehicle that you own, then how can I trust you to manage people? Uh, if you're not able to have three meals a day, if you're not able to plan your day to have eight hours of sleep, uh, because sleep, as he said, you cannot learn without sleep. Sleep is the cooking of the cake. When you sleep, the information you've learned during the day is being uh, transferred from the memory to the hard drive. That's basically what happens in the brain when you sleep. So if you don't sleep, it stays in the memory and it just needs a one control out delete, boom, you forgot everything. So uh, uh, that's as simple as that. So uh, sleeping is very important. And you cannot do anything else that I've shown you. Actually, you can't even learn what I'm telling you now if you haven't slept last night because tomorrow morning you'll forgot, you, you have forgotten it. So this is, this is very, very important. And so sharpening the saw, uh, seeking continuous improvement, this is something that a leader uh, must do. The, the humanity, anything that is biologic, actually even physics, you know, entropy, everything changes form, everything evolves, nothing stays the same. That's the, that's the universe is built like that. If you go universe, physics, physics is built like that, biology, biology is built like that, well, human, society, we're built like that, it's the same thing, we change. So a leader needs to adapt, needs to change. And remember, we serve the team. So. Uh, a leader that comes to me say, hey, uh, the guy, uh, uh, he didn't understand, my guy didn't understand what I, what I wanted, so that's the reason why we have a live bug, a live issue right now. I was like, no, no, man. The reason why I promoted you leader is because I saw in you, not that you were the best coder, but I saw in you that you had the ability to understand other people. You had some emotional IQ that was, I saw that was above the average that allows you to communicate clearly to people. So you have to adapt your message. When I speak to uh, uh, an artist about a new game and a new concept, I'll be very, uh, I'll be very, I'll say, uh, intense. I'll be very uh, dramatic. You know, I'll even mimic uh, in animation. I'll even mimic what I'm looking for, thing like that. If I start doing this with a software engineer about a very specific task, so say, what the fuck are you doing here? So with a software engineer, I don't actually don't go talk to him. I actually send him an email with bullet points, you know? So I'm making, again, caricatural example. But what I mean, it's, it's important to adapt. So someone that uh, you, you know that is super introvert, that is not going to tell you if he doesn't understand, then you have to do active. You have to be active. So, hey, you, can you do this? Do you understand exactly? Can you tell me back what I ask you? So I make sure that you understand. But somebody that is super quick, you just try to be as efficient with your word as possible because if you start being too long, the person is gonna check out in his brain. So you have to be very specific. And th th this is basically what you have to look for when you're a leader is improving yourself and improving your way that you can communicate with every one of your team. Now, sometimes, and it happened to me quite, well, not often, but it happens to me 
where I'm trying to adapt myself to a specific employee or one of my report, and I just cannot find the plug. For whatever reason, my personality or the way I try to approach that person, uh, that person makes is resistant. Uh, I, something that works super well with him doesn't work with him. And, and sometimes after trying, you have to, if you try too much, the person will peel it. Again, it's about sincerity and about being real. So really, uh, when this happens, I, I will go to another one of my leader, and I'll say, hey man, can you help me out? I'm unable to talk to this guy. He, because I'm not technical, he just won't listen to me. I mean, he says, yes, boss, yes, boss, yes, boss, but he doesn't do it, and I know he doesn't understand it. So can you help me coach him don't tell him I'm sending you, just do it for me and try to make him see exactly uh, where we're trying to go. So again, it's about uh, improving yourself. The moment a leader thinks he's perfect, uh, he's not a good leader anymore. Because guess what, his team is growing. He has to grow as fast or not faster than his team. So that's very important. Now, those are, uh, has anyone seen my presentation last year? Ah, good. So those, uh, the, those last uh, are concepts that I pulled out from uh, a little bit from my presentation last year, just to resume, resume what we've discussed about. So those are key things that a leader needs to understand. So humility, I mentioned it, right? Uh, one of the things that I really didn't like when I was in Czech Republic is uh, uh, we had some founders uh, in, in the studio, and those founders were <laughs> Those founders are uh, hire me, right? Uh, but when they hire me, I was their boss because they were dev. So they were the owner of the studio, but they were actually, the, uh, one was a software engineer, uh, two were artists, and the third one was uh, the sound engineer. So they hired me as shareholder, they were my boss, but in their dev role, uh, they reported to me. That was not easy. <laughs> that was really, really tough. And, and one of the things that I, I failed at getting them to understand, uh, again, they were the owner, they were the founder of the company, was uh, humility, was the fact that even if the founder, even if you're the owner, uh, employee should not have to check you and say, hmm, he's looking in a bad mood today, so I'm not gonna ask him for this, you know? And try, when employee try, uh, they have to manage you. They have to say, oh, the boss is in a bad mood, uh, don't go see him, don't ask him this, or don't do this. This is something that does not happen in, in our bubble at GameSys. Uh, there's not such a thing as me being in a bad mood. It never, never happens. I mean, sometimes they'll see that I'm in a bad mood because my ears get red. Uh, their ears get red can mean either I'm super happy, excited, or I'm in a bad mood. It can either be the two things, but uh, they'll, they'll see it, but never in my body language, never in my words. Uh, this is something that is very, very key. If you're a leader, you're a professional. Uh, my father passed away two years ago, and when I was in Czech Republic, and no one noticed anything at all. Uh, and, and I was quite close to my father, and I couldn't be with him when he passed away. And this was, uh, this was tough, but I was there, straight face, doing, smiling, and as a leader, you need to be able to compartment those things. I mean, again, perfection doesn't exist in humanity. So uh, uh, I'm saying this now, but I'm pretty sure that just because I said it, one day I'm going to be caught in a bad mood because something's going to happen. Again, it's not about being perfect all the time. It's by understanding that your responsibility as a leader is to be a pillar, is to be the power supply of the studio. So people shouldn't say, oh, oh yeah, okay, I can go talk to him now. You know, uh, People should feel comfortable to talk to you all the time. This one is another one, it's linked with trust. So when I provide someone with uh, a responsibility, I'm like, okay, you have a new responsibility? Well, attached to it comes the authority. So you have the authority to do the task and make the decision in order to answer your responsibility. The thing is when someone gives, when a leader gives a responsibility to someone but keeps the authority, this is a situation where do the task this way by this time. And when I do that, I'm basically, I, win, I, I guarantee to win as a leader and he's guaranteed to lose as an employee. Why? Because if he succeeds in the task, I said, hey, lucky you did it like I told you. I win uh, in, in the corporate dominance of things, you know? And if he fails, I said, ah, 
you didn't do it the way I said, so that's why it failed. You know, boom, I still win. I'm sure you've, you've experienced this in one way or in another. When I give the responsibility to someone, I'm telling him I'm expecting a result. That's the result I'm measuring. I'm not telling him how to achieve the result. Uh, I'm telling him the responsibility, and he has automatically the authority to achieve the result, and that's what I'm measuring, the result. So always authority fused with responsibility. Culture is in the detail. So uh, when I uh, talk to people, uh, it doesn't work with you. When I talk to people, if I go see Sergei uh, and I want to talk to him about his weekend thing like that, and he's sitting on his desk, I'm going to tell him, hey, Sergei, how are you weekend? Cool, cool, cool. And uh, we talk. But if I, Sergei forgot to do something and make a mistake, I, I'm going to come to him and say, hey, Sergei. And I, I'm going to lean to be at the same high level as him so he doesn't feel that I'm dominating with my body towards him, uh, that I'm, I'm actually at the same level. He doesn't feel like, hey, what happened there? What the fuck did you do? And, uh, <laughs> but you're laughing, guys. But if it has been done to you, you know the feeling is really not cool, really not good. So I'm very careful when you do this. Same thing with praise and redirection. I don't reprimand employee. I'm not their father. I'm not, uh, I don't see myself above them. They're men, they're women, they have kids like me. We're just different age and we have different skill set. Uh, so I don't reprimand them like a teacher or like a father. I redirect their behavior. That's what I do. But I praise in public and I redirect in private all the time. So when someone does good, I'm very glad and it makes sometimes happily uncomfortable people because I'm praising them in public. They're like, oh, don't do this. <laughs> but I see, still see the, that they are appreciating it, even more after a year and a half than it was at the first one. <laughs> but, uh, and, but when I want to correct the behavior, then this is done in private. And it's only the person that uh, is impacted knows about it. Or sometimes, if the person has a, a, is a few levels uh, in the hierarchy below me, then I'll work with that person's leader and I'll coach that leader how to coach that person. So that's very important. Um, and the last one, God, it's tough. This one was hard when I was younger. Now it's even harder. This one, you know it from the news, fake news, real news, you know, perception. Is it, why, why do we start calling rumors fake news? They're not news, they're rumors, right? But we call them fake news in the, in the internet, you know, on Facebook and all these things. Well, the reality is those, does this mechanic has existed since humanity exist, has existed. Storyteller, you know, uh, people that, uh, a lot of the legend that we know today from 2,000 years ago probably were not that big, probably were not that strong. You know, it's, it's all the rumors that have been exaggerated by people. Well, the thing is, in a studio, in a company, this can kill your company. So as a, I'll give you tons of examples that I do systematically. We have a game room, by the way, in our studio. <laughs> we have a game room where people can play PlayStation. It's on a big screen TV. And uh, we have uh, a few employees that during lunchtime, they play an hour. So uh, uh, after their lunch, they just uh, play for a, a while. And I've heard a few times other employees that are not attracted by game that they like, yeah, these guys are lazy. They play video game all the time. I'm like, okay, so are you gonna be in tomorrow at seven? Because these two guys comes in the office at seven in the morning and usually quite late. So they actually, within the day, uh, they probably spend more time than you in the office. Uh, and I'm, what I've just did, I just resynchronize the perception with the reality. Uh, same thing with, oh, these guys, we have one guy that uh, is, has two and a half kids, or two kids and a third one is about to, Pop. Um, and uh, 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 yeah, so, so this guy uh, works very early in the morning, uh, like really early. And uh, obviously he leaves at three because he wants to spend some time with his kids and everything. So he leaves at three. And again, I heard, oh, I was leaving early. No, I was like, yeah, okay. Well, I'm looking for, forward to see you tomorrow morning at 6.30 in the studio. Oh, oh, yeah, oh. <laughs> he actually works uh, the same amount of hour or even more than you. Oh, okay, I didn't know. Well, if you didn't know, you shouldn't open your mouth. You know, you should ask the question uh, and not start the rumor. So leaders, it's our job, as soon as we see those things, to synchronize reality and perception. Synchronize reality and perception. Because if you don't, 
then those perceptions will become the reality of a lot of people. And then you, get, you have to start doing a, firework, a firefight, you know, uh, to solve all those issues. And you're like, but guys, this is not true. Why did it become big like that? It was never true. You guys just went up in a tangent. Well, but if this, then that. Then if that, then this. And then it's like, yeah, but the initial if was wrong and no one corrected it. No one synchronized the perception with the reality. So that's a very, very important rule. I'm almost done before you stop me. <laughs> and that's the last part, or the almost last part. Uh, this is important. The team knows this. I don't want them to be loyal to me. I don't even want them to be loyal to GameSys. I'm not asking loyalty towards me or towards my company. I'm asking loyalty towards our culture, towards the way we behave, towards our mission. If I keep the studio mission the same, if I keep the behavior and the culture of the studio the same, the people will be loyal towards that. Now, if I ask them to be loyal to me, I can turn around in a year from now and be an asshole. Why should I get the same loyalty if I change my behavior? You know, the company can start being a stupid company and an evil company. Why should they be loyal to me or to the company if the company changed their behavior? So loyalty uh, is something that has to be um, bi-directional. Loyalty that is not bi-directional is called slavery. So the slave is, is loyal to his master because if he's not loyal to his master, he gets killed. That's not loyalty, that's slavery basically. So loyalty is something that is an exchange. It's a little bit the same as the learning and the teaching thing. So the loyalty is, is married together. So uh, be loyal to the way the company treats you. Be loyal to the way your leader treats you. Don't be loyal to them personally. Uh, that's, that's a mistake because if they turn around uh, and they change their behavior, then you're stuck. So you're like, yeah, but uh, well, you said you were loyal to me. Yeah, but you're killing a puppy. You know, you're kicking a puppy. Why should I stay loyal? So th this, is, this is something that is very important. And the last part. A lot of the time people say, ah, don't be a manager, be a leader. This is bullshit. There's moment to manage and there's moment to lead. Those two things are not one opposing to the other. They are different. Those two things, they are in your toolbox. And you use one when one needs to be used and you use the other when it needs to be used. And a lot of people will see this, uh, th this chart, and you'll go, you know what, in my group, it's better to administer than to innovate. If I start innovating, I'm gonna break everything in my team, in my group, in the type of product that I do uh, for that specific things. But for something else, then yes, for something else, I'm able to innovate. So basically, manager will administer, while leader will innovate. A manager will copy, imitate. So please, uh, manager of a production line, you know? Make sure that is ISO 9000 or ISO 14000, like make sure, or Six Sigma. Make sure that everything is done exactly the same way. And that's an achievement. So at that point, you don't need to lead. You just need to do it r right, you know, or do the right thing. So copy, imitate, maintain, develops, focus on system and structure, focus on people, realize on control, trust as a short range view, as a long range perspective, ask how and when, ask what and why, always uh, fixed on the bottom line, on the profit, on the actual minute or micro value of everything that they do versus on the horizon, I'm building value for the future. Uh, accept the status quo, challenge it. Is the classic good soldier is her own person, meaning that uh, the person uh, will receive a task and he will do it his way, uh, not to do it exactly like it was told to do it, but it will find a way to actually enhance the value of his task. Uh, and does things right versus does the right thing. So does thing right, meaning I do the way I was shown exactly how it was pro shown to me. And sometimes that, what, that is what you have to do. But other times, that's not the right approach. And leader, they have to choose. And you have to understand the difference between those things and when to go, no, let's crash everything, let's garbage, let's do it a new way. And sometimes like, no, all is good. Just keep me informed of how it goes up and how it's improved. So uh, this is something that I wanted to uh, share with you as well because a lot of the coaching and leadership say, oh, managers are bad, leaders are great. Manager, uh, these are just 
uh, it's like a uh, massive multiplayer online game. This is different, uh, different class. <laughs> you choose when you need to be a healer. You choose when you want to be a, a tank. You choose when you be a DPS. Well, it's this axis. So these are all tools that you have in your leadership toolbox that allows you to use it at the right time. And that is what a leader is, understanding the higher level of this, looking at the forest and choosing what to do when, do it in a sincere way, and being empathetic and, and genuine when you do it with your team. I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just a heads up, uh, we will announce in a month from now multiple new hire. Uh, the studio has grown uh, a little bit more than three times in the last 16 months. Uh, and we're going to grow at a faster rate for the next 12 months. Uh, because of the transaction, I got even additional news, Kaya. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so that's, uh, we, we uh, most likely will be again double the size uh, by next summer. So you should just check out uh, GameSys uh, website uh, for all those, uh, uh, and then we have, we're, we're spread it throughout uh, cv.ee, cvkeskos and everything. Uh, and I'll be doing your first interview, uh, so get ready. I do every single first interview. So uh, if you want to apply, we're looking for a software engineer, artist, animator, uh, QA, etc. And that's it. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do the, I almost forgot the. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Nothing to question? No question? Good. Sorry. I didn't understand I you. I didn't understand your question. What is the question? Who is responsible for helping people who are under technogen impression? There are what? Technogen impression. Technogen? Yes. I don't know what this is. Technogen? Mm -hmm. You are a cyber specialist. You are at the field of information. Uh, um, because to uh, make uh, this uh, 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 automated, it is necessary to uh, buy time from provider. You know what? Maybe we can have the discussion on one on one. It's gonna be better for uh, for everyone. So I'll I'll, I'll talk to you I right after. Maybe, maybe any, uh, anybody uh, can ask here. Yeah. 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 And guys, this is all for today. I think. <coughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.